this is Anne with The Paint Mixer. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, so I'm really excited about today's painting. It's one of my all-time favorites. We are doing cosmic arch. So if um, you're familiar with Arches National Park, Delicate Arch is the, the most iconic arch and it's on all the license plates in Utah. So this is a really fun kind of expressive painting capturing that natural water. So before we get started, time to kind of prep our space. So make sure you have things covering your table. If you have um, one of our creativity to go kits, now is a good time to lay your butcher paper down and to pull out your palette. Oh, this is a dirty palette. <laughs> um, pull out your palette and load up your paint. So um, this is acrylic paint we're working with today. And it's good to know that you know, whatever you get this paint on, be it your clothing, carpet, once it dries, it's there forever. So don't forget to protect your outfit with an apron or kind of a t-shirt you're not too wild about. If you have long sleeves, roll them up. Little warning about the paint. Okay, so we have everything covered that needs to be covered. Go ahead and grab a water cup. And this will be great for cleaning out your brushes in between colors. And I've already loaded up my palette here. So I've got phthalo blue, white, black, red, phthalo green, chrome yellow, and burnt sienna. Now, if you have a metallic paint, like a copper, you can use that instead of burnt sienna, but totally up to you. Both will look really great on the red rock arch. Okay, so let's get started. First step is going to be finding your larger of your two brushes. So I have two brushes here. <laughs> They're all loaded up with paint too because I was playing before this, but we have the larger, the mama brush, and the small one, the baby. So mama and baby is what I'll be referring to these um, throughout the class. But first step is finding your mama brush. And it is okay if your brush is a little wet. Water is really helpful for this first step. So I'm using a gessoed canvas today. You can kind of see the ghost of a painting um, that used to be there. But this is awesome because gesso allows me to, you know, keep painting on a canvas. Or if you're not really excited about a painting you've made, you can always gesso over it. But the first step, really easy, is covering the entire canvas, no matter what size your canvas is, with phthalo blue, with a dark blue. So the water is really helpful in this step because, see if I keep going side to side, it's kind of scratchy, but if I take water on the brush, it starts to fill in the texture of the canvas. So your mantra becomes paint, canvas, water cup. Always keeping your brush a little moist. And this is a good warm up, just you know, mindlessly coloring blue. And this blue does not have to be, you know, free of brush strokes because I don't know if you noticed, but in our example painting, we're gonna be doing a lot of texture in the sky. So let yourself off the hook as far as this first base coat. Texture is going to be added, so don't get too uh, concerned with your application here. And if you uh, want, you can always cover your side edges too. So whatever you put on the front is going to fold onto your top and side edges. Just a nice way to gallery wrap your canvas and paint. And that way it looks really finished when you're all done. I think that naked edges looks kind of unfinished. And then you don't really need a frame either. I don't know if you guys have been to um, Southern Utah, but it is really magical. The, the landscape is unlike any, any in the world. It really feels like you're on a different planet. Just big red arches and amphitheaters and funny little towers. All right, so keep covering your canvas if you still have some white spots. 
But I just want to introduce the next step because this step is kind of uh, going to be where we're at for the next couple stages. So there is one brush that I didn't mention, and it is just a napkin. So if you have napkins, uh, paper towels, they can also be used as a brush. I see a little white spot I gotta cover up. So go ahead and find your napkin, and you're gonna crumple it up. So you have a nice wad here. And now I'm going to take my napkin right into that same blue, and I'm gonna add a little white. So I have white and blue on the napkin. And that's a lot of paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of dab some excess off on my palette. So I have light blue, white and blue. And now I'm just gonna take it to my canvas and start dabbing. So this technique is called pouncing. So think of it kind of like, um, like the way a cat pounces. And I'll take there. One, see how I'm starting in one area and kind of radiating outward? That is super helpful because if we just go and do random dots, it does not read as the cosmos. It's more like polka dots. So make sure you kind of work your paint outward from a center point. Also, if you find that you have a lot of paint in one spot, you can always pick up that dark blue. And um, <laughs> windows are getting washed right now, so I don't know if you can hear the sound. But you can always go back and use your base color to cover up. Oh no, what did you just do? Take some more dark blue and just pass it out. It is impossible to screw this up. So I'm gonna do this light blue, white and blue all over as my first kind of cosmic star layer. And it's kind of fun too, if, you're, if your background paint is a little wet still, this one is going to pick up some of that wet paint. So it, it's doing double duty for you as far as making that starry texture. And if you are using a easel, make sure you hold on the back of it because sometimes when you're pouncing like this, and uh, if you get a little too into it, you can collapse your easel. It's happened to me before. So just gently tapping. And take it lower than you think, although in the example we have all this rock on the bottom. Um, you want to take this sky all over so that you have a lot of freedom when it comes to drawing your ground later. Don't forget to step back from your painting every now and again. See it from a distance. See if there's any spots that need some more love. Sometimes people, when they do this, they create like a central Milky Way we keep a lot of lightness and brightness in one central spot, which looks awesome. All right, so that light blue layer is all done. Now we're going to start to play with color. So you can use the same um, napkin or you can find a new one. I'm going to set this down real quick. So I'm going to just do a new one so you can see the colors a little better. Now, I know that it may be hard to see, but when you look closely to the example, we have greens, purples, reds, all sorts of color in the sky. This is your one opportunity to see the northern lights really go wild, make lots of fun colors. Whatever color you decide to do, make sure you add a little bit of white in with it. So I'm gonna do this green first, and a little bit of white. The reason why I do the white is so that it stands out from my dark blue background. So I'm going to do one color at a time so it doesn't get too muddy. So I'm starting with green. Add some green bits. So you see how the white and green really stands out? Now if I just take some pure phthalo green, that dark green, it's a little harder to see, a little deeper. Again, nothing is right or wrong, just different... Uh, 
different outcomes. So if you like that dark green, go for it. If you like the light green, go for it too. So I'm just gonna start sporadically adding colors. And it may seem a little, you know, hectic having all these colors in your sky, but trust me, whenever we put the arch over top of it, it will read really beautifully. All right, so I like this green, but I want it to be a little brighter. So I'm gonna add a little yellow in with my green, kind of like a neon bit. And if you want to keep it, you know, without the vivid colors, you just really like the blue and white, that works great too. You are the artist. Whatever you decide is the right choice, as long as it is intentional, right? Although sometimes the accidents end up the coolest, so we're cool with accidents too. Let's see, what other color should I put in here? Give me some purple. So purple is blue and white. So I'm gonna take some, or not blue and white, blue and red. So I'm mixing some phthalo blue in with my red and picking up a little bit of white. Make kind of like a deep lavender. Ooh, a little too much red. It's okay, we can always correct it. Nice. And again, this is like not a science, it's more a feeling. So do whatever colors feel right. You can always kind of pick up some more white if you wanna lighten and brighten any sections. And we're gonna add individual stars later too. So if you wanna add any constellations or just some more um, pinpointed stars, we're gonna do that once we create our arch. I'm gonna do a couple little more dabs. Just taking this purple up in the sky over here. All right, putting the napkin down. So now we get to talk a little bit about our ground and our arch. So I'll set this aside. And if you take a look at this example, notice that the ground is not flat. It's kind of undulating and rocky. If you've ever been to this area, you'll know that the ground is not even. It's actually really steep um, and rocky. So we're gonna start using all black for our ground and then our arch. And then we'll go back over top of that black with the earth tone, whether it's copper or burnt sienna. So think of it all in silhouette first, and then we'll hit it with the highlights. So before, um, actually we'll do the ground first, the ground's pretty easy, and then I'll do the arch a couple times, since it isn't a very um, intuitive shape. So first step, finding that mama brush again, and just going into pure black. And it's, it's a little intimidating, but don't worry about it. It's just, Paint. So now I'm going to come across here and just make a random ground line. I like having it kind of go up on either side. All right, so once you have a line, a nice wiggly natural line, I want you to fill in the area all the way to the ground, all in black. And a lot of the uh, detail of the ground is gonna come in when we do the kind of red rock highlights. So this is pretty void of detail for now, but it'll come later. Remember, you can continue this now onto the sides too if you want it to truly wrap around your canvas. And you know, you don't have to do delicate arch. 
can always do some other kind of landscape. This is a good kind of base for a lot of different, a lot of different paintings. So from this point, you could technically make pine trees or mountains or little silhouettes of people. So doing that kind of cosmic background is a great backdrop for anything, anything you like. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside to dry a little bit and show you the art shape on a little demo board because I want you to watch it once or twice before taking it to your canvas. Always good to practice. Practice before doing something permanent, right? So I'm just going to kind of sketch out where my ground, kind of my imaginary ground is. Here's my canvas. All right, so this is gonna be a mini, a mini to start. So I want you to start by defining where your arch is going to stop, the top of the arch, just a little line. And you're welcome to do this on, on your palette or a spare piece of computer paper or something. All right, so from here, I am going to make one line kind of down on the one side and then a thin letter K. It's like a little, a little letter K. From here, I'm going to make a arching shape down to about halfway on the other side. This is the chunkier side of delicate arts, the less delicate side. All right, from here, I'm just going to close off that shape and make another kind of rounded bottom. At this point, you can beef it up in any way you like. I might make mine a little taller on the top and then just filling it in with black. Okay, one, I would maybe rewind and, and practice again. Also, it's, it's totally legal to uh, Google pictures of the delicate arch. It's always good to have kind of a real life inspiration. Another tip is to start thinner than you think because it's a lot easier to make something bigger, much harder to make something smaller. All right, take them to the canvas now. And if you wanna just watch first and then you know maybe press pause, rewind it, that works great too. But anyway, first step, I'm going to define the top of my arch. So just a tiny horizontal line where I know my arch is going to stop. At this point, I'm gonna come over to the, my left. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is mirrored um, for you or not, but on the left side of my arch, I'm going to make a thin letter K all the way to the ground. Very thin, remember, starting skinny. At this point, I'm gonna make a little kind of rainbow shape cutting across to the right side. From here, I'm going to close off that shape and then make another little, um, what shape is that? Um, like a little cone head there on the bottom. All right, so right now my arch is pretty skinny, pretty um, not very natural, right? So I'm gonna start to beef it up in certain areas. So I'm gonna make kind of like a little hat on the top, make it a little more natural, a little more rocky. So it's not, you know, perfectly straight lines. And then I'm gonna take the, this uh, kind of looks like bangs or a wig or curtains, kind of cutting across and then beefing it up on this right side. Okay, so once you are feeling pretty good about your art shape, you can go ahead and fill it in with black. And you can always, you know, edit and tweak. It's not like you, you have to be totally done with making the shape. And just filling in. Making sure the right side of your arch is thicker and appears to be closer to you than the left side. All 
All right, stepping back from your painting. See if there's anything you want to edit. And remember, we're gonna add a lot of detail with our highlight color. So stay tuned because this is where it really starts to come alive. So make sure your arch is nice and covered in black, no sky peeking through. And then we're going to pick up some of our uh, copper or your kind of burnt sienna, your red rock color. There we go. And I'm going to come on my ground first. I'm just adding a little bit of highlights here and there. And a little goes a long way. Now imagine this, I imagine the light is shining through the center of the arch and is blocked by the actual rock. So I'm going to put a little highlight coming out of the middle. So it's like moonlight is shining through, pretty fun. It's fun to think about your light source a little bit. And just a couple other miscellaneous lines down here on the ground. So now when we come into the arch, it gets pretty fun. So here we can start to define um, things like rocks that overlap. So this front bit is going to overlap. And kind of being subtle with it. It's okay if it blends a little bit into your black. I think that gives it a cool, like multi-tone look. And remember, this is a rock. So try to avoid making straight lines. Make it kind of jagged in some spots. But I think it's cool to have your color start pretty bright and then dissipate as it goes across. I think that adds a lot of depth to your arch. So if you're working with a metallic paint, definitely step back time to time because depending on how you hold it, the sheen will affect what you see. So keep tinkering with it. If you add too much of this highlight, you can always go back with black and mellow out any spots that you're not wild about. So I'm, I'm digging mine. I, don't, I, like, I like that it's still kind of dark and only a couple glints of the highlight are showing. But you know, step back, take your time, make sure it is how you like it. You can see how different the example and mine are and that's okay, yours is gonna be different than mine too. And that's why art is really fun and not super boring, not, not like uh, just printing out a picture. It's gonna be unique every time. All right, time for individual stars. Find in your little baby brush, the tail of your baby, the wooden end is great for making stars. So I've dipped it in white paint and I'm just going to dab all over where I want there to be stars. And this is really fun. You can make it like some shooting stars. I think it's good to make these a little random too. Stars are not like evenly spaced polka dots. It's hard to be random though. Maybe you can add like the like Orion or the Big Dipper or any other constellations you know. You can even add a moon if you want. Beautiful. All right, from here, it's kind of up to you to customize and make it your own. But the final step, whenever you get there is to simply sign your painting. Gallery standard is the bottom right hand corner and initials keep it really simple. And that's a wrap. Cosmic arch, pretty fun, not too hard. I think the arch is the trickiest part, but just take your time, rewind if you need. And I just really appreciate you guys joining us today. And don't um, forget to check out the Paint Mixer's website for upcoming in-studio classes, as well as online classes, private events, and other fun things we have going on. Lots of outdoor art opportunities in the next month and fun holiday things as well. So thanks again. We really appreciate you. Uh, be sure to share your photos of your artwork on Instagram. Our tag is at 
the underscore paint mixer. And yeah, thanks again. Have a great day.